was, did we consider removing the soil? There's a dense matrix of roots within that granite curving. Uh, we've got approximately 350 square feet of area within that we pour the activated carbon or charcoal in. To take the soil samples, it was very difficult to even push a probe down in that area because of the density of the roots. Now, there, there may be ways to remove some of the soil. A lot of people have offered advice. They're, they're very willing to help anything to save the trees to increase the chances of survival. One of the things, uh, one of the people that called me earlier this morning has an, an excavator vacuum, which a liquid is applied to the root zone and it uses very powerful suction to remove soil out of the root zone. After things settle down, hopefully later today or, or tomorrow, we're going to get the experts together. We're going to look at some of these suggestions that people are, have proposed, and we're going to try to assign merit to them and hopefully be able to take action very quickly. I think that the vacuum, if we are able to take out that soil, would be a very positive thing to do. Now, because the root zone extends well beyond the granite curbing, we would probably have to remove the pavers some distance out from the trees. Really, I wish we had those soil samples back that would give us an idea of how far the herbicide has spread. Then we could move the pavers and then first we would probably apply that activated carbon to a larger area. Yesterday we put it just within the confines of that bed around each of the trees. But it's very likely that the herbicide has moved beyond that. It's just at this point we don't know how far and in what direction. So those are some of the things that uh, uh, direction that will be taken very soon. Yes, ma'am. Yes, it could. If it moves into the landscape, we've got mag hollies, magnolias, white oak. If uh, those root zones come in contact with the herbicide, they'll absorb it just like the live oaks have, and there's a very real chance of injury. And with that, people? Uh, no, it's very low. What about, what's the possibility of the toxins going below the soil into the ground water, therefore affecting the water supply? Yeah, okay. Okay. As a matter of fact, um, Tom McCauley, Tom, right Tom is, um, okay. is in our risk management environmental health area. He might be able to touch on that, and then also maybe Dr. Inlow. Uh, my name is Tom McCauley, and my uh, last name is M-C-C-A-U-L-E-Y. I'm with the Department of Risk Management and Safety uh, with a focus on environmental compliance and uh, responsibility. Uh, the question was, uh, what impact would it have on the groundwater, essentially? And then the water supply, okay. protecting all the food. Okay, so um, the soils in this general area are very dense. They're um, generally a silty clay or clay sand or uh, a clay soil, so it's very, uh, it's very dense. So the migration of this material through that clay would be uh, uh, be very difficult but uh, generally the uppermost aquifer is greater than five feet below ground surface so uh, uh, but for a drinking water well a groundwater source for drinking water purposes would be in the depth of 150 to 200 feet for a, for a drinking water well so very little chance very little chance to impact the groundwater for uh, drinking water purposes <laughs> Can someone talk about the license for this poison? Do you need a license? How do you get your hands on this? Basically, uh, you do not have to have a license to purchase this. It is not a restricted use product here in the state of Alabama. Even in big quantities? Yeah, even, in, uh, yes, yes. Um, basically, it's not a widely available product. You wouldn't be able to go to your local box store and buy it. You would need to go to an agricultural cooperative or an actual pesticide distributor uh, to purchase uh, Spike ADDF. So no, there, there's not a license required for purchase or use. I haven't seen a price list lately. Herbicide prices uh, changed quite a bit. Um, it's not extremely cheap. So I would, 
it's, there's some cost involved. I, I don't have a figure right now. I understand it's not um, restricted to purchase. However, if folks do go in and purchase it, is there a log? Do you have to register when you, is there any track record of people who buy this? No, there wouldn't necessarily be a track record of people who buy it. The label is the law. So the label is a legally binding document so that it, uh, anything you do with that herbicide that is not in agreement with what the label directs you to do is a violation of federal law. And you may not know this, but I understand you said you can go into stores and get it. You can you get it online? Can you buy it online? I, I would strongly suspect you could uh, find someone uh, online who would sell. I don't know that for a fact, but it wouldn't surprise me. Basically, Spike uh, ADDF is an herbicide that's typically used for total vegetation control. Uh, it's very effective at what it does, and that is to uh, kill most plants. It, um, it is utilized widely in rights of way situations for tree control, uh, where we do not, we can't afford to have trees growing. Uh, in industrial situations uh, where they do require bare ground, uh, say around uh, electrical pumping stations uh, and along fence rows. Um, in terms of farmstead use, along fence rows would probably be uh, one of the more common uses uh, by uh, the general public for farmers in Alabama. Do, city, do cities have this? Would city workers need to have something like this? With city workers... Public um, work, streets? Typically, spike is not utilized in situations where susceptible vegetation that you do not want to injure uh, are. And so city workers would not typically utilize spike uh, anywhere near sensitive vegetation. The label very clearly states do not do that. There are other products they would use. Folks, we got time for about two more questions. Again, there's two more questions. Spike is not a material that's ever been used on this campus by landscape services or any other entity. So <coughs> samples, uh, the detection of the chemical up here is not an accident that might that is not there because of anything that might have occurred on campus as a part of routine activity. A lot of that will be based on what's involved in replacing them. We've certainly had a number of people all over the region, in fact, even the country, tree farmers have been calling us and volunteering any help. It's, it's really gratifying to see that. We wanted to get past this first phase, see what the growth of the trees are, and, and, and really take a close look at that. And then based on that, hoping for a miracle, but based on that, um, then we would consult with all the experts and say, you know, is that even feasible due to all the celebrations? If you replant, could a tree even take root? Number, a number of horticultural um, considerations there, but um, but obviously um, uh, people are going to want to know that. And on the website that we have uh, at auburn.edu slash oaks, we'll be making any updates or announcements to let people know um, as we make those discussions. Some folks back here want to know what they can do to help, maybe not rolling or anything they can do. We, um, we have uh, just been talking about that today. Uh, with the president being gone, I certainly don't want to say that we're not going to roll the oaks anymore. <laughs> um, and last night, I don't think we could have stopped it if we wanted to. Um, the question has, has come up a great deal, and, and actually someone responded, and, and um, I think a number of us were amused by it, that, that um, you know, is this going to stop the, the celebrations at Tumor's Corner? And, and we heard someone say, well, did the Grinch steal Christmas? And um, um, no, the celebrations at Tumor's Corner actually existed before the rolling of the tree. Not, not before the trees, but before they started rolling the trees, they rolled the corner. So uh, there'll be a lot of things we can probably do um, to make those celebrations continue. And of course, if the advice is that we not roll the trees in order to save them, I imagine members of the Auburn family would honor that. Down the road, if you guys would want to plant, I know it's hard, but plant new trees, could they grow there? That is definitely a horticultural. Last question, Gary. Got to get the mayor back. <laughs> Spike has a half-life of 12 to 15 months. It's likely to be in the soil for at least three to five years. And according to the manufacturer, it could inhibit growth for as long as seven years. If the trees were to die and the decision was made to replant, the soil would be excavated, new soil brought in, and an environment cr created that where trees could grow and thrive. So if you guys put new soil in, you can use Absolutely. Absolutely. That's time, folks. <laughs> <laughs> we will be, several of us will be on hand if you need more to talk to anybody from alumni, students. Um, we'll stay around. Thank you very much for coming and stay uh, posted to the webpage. <laughs>